Do you want a strong custom lord for your favorite faction? Perhaps you're looking for a way to make your campaigns have a quick start? Want the perfect general for a specific army type? Then this might interest you. Greetings, I'm Sophus, and today we're going over Total War Warhammer 3. A feature present in the game that isn't too explored is the ability to save lords and heroes. This feature is very useful, in some factions more than others. For instance, High Elves can use this to avoid having to pay influence costs for their lords with good traits. Kislev can have many perfectly trained Ice Witches, Ogres can have lords with the ideal big names and the Warriors of Chaos can have their lords and heroes with the preferred boons. The only cost is gold, they are more expensive than hiring normal lords and heroes, much more so if they're very high level. So, all that to say, you can make use of this feature to save powerful lords to assist you in your future campaigns. The idea behind this system is no doubt replayability value, allowing you to reuse a general you liked and acting as a sort of new game plus feature. The races in this game are very different in their playstyle, so it would be rather extensive to go over every lord and hero and mention every possible ideal form of each. So instead, I am here to present a way to get the perfect custom lord and mention a few general tips and traits worth getting. The method to get a custom lord is simple. You start off choosing a general type and picking one with the starting traits you want. Easier done with some factions where all you have is the trait that shows up in the recruit menu, more complicated in factions where you have things like names of power and dedications to chaos gods. But assuming you've handled that, here you have the baseline of your custom lord. Go ahead and save it. Now an important thing to keep in mind is their level. Ideally we don't want them leveled beyond the bare minimum for them to be useful. Otherwise they might be so expensive as to mess with your economy once you hire them. So being mindful of that, we'll try to level our lord as little as possible, when starting any campaign, as soon as it's convenient without harming your economy, hire the custom lord, then dismiss it. We're going defeat trait hunting. With so many legendary lords out there, there's of course a lot of defeat traits of all kinds. Some are bad, some are good, some are really good to the point of being universal in their utility. But there's of course things to consider. First, the distance relative to your starting point, then the survivability of that legendary lord, and lastly the overall risk. No matter the trait you're going for, you should always try and pick the legendary lord closest to your target if your faction has multiple lords. Survivability is something to keep in mind since some legendary lords can't be revived easily, can't be revived at all, or work off of a random timer before their faction returns such as the Beastmen. Therefore, the closest you start to them, the better your odds of getting their trait before they're out for the rest of your campaign. And risk is simply just how difficult the fight may be, or how much it would derail your campaign. For example, trying to get the defeat trait off of a dwarf legendary lord, as the Empire would result in a very complicated situation unless their presence in the map is minimal. But don't worry, there are workarounds for those extreme cases. For instance, you could play the Empire campaign as normal, ally with the dwarfs, then have your lord close to the dwarf you want to take the trait from. Declare war, win the battle, save your custom lord, then roll back the save. So long as you don't save your lord again in this campaign, next campaign you'll have the defeat trait, and you've avoided derailing this one for it. As I've mentioned, you recruit the custom lord as early as possible, then dismiss them. This makes your job easier, as you can then go and replace any of your current lords on the map with the custom, once the cooldown on hiring them back expires. This is done to avoid fighting too many battles and getting too much experience, as that'll make them even more expensive. Once you get the defeat trait, save them, then do what you just did before battle to replace them with another lord. 
If you're fighting with multiple stacks against the lord you want to get the trade from, just make sure your custom lord is the one leading the attack. And so, this is pretty much the method to collect the traits without getting too much experience. Another good thing is this avoids filling up your lord traits with relatively useless traits you usually get for fighting multiple battles. As of recording, the limit of traits on a lord is 40 and it can be reached faster than you might expect. If you subjected your custom lord to every battle and collected traits from across several campaigns, at some point you would just not get any new traits when defeating a new legendary lord or doing other activities that give you new traits, such as fighting several battles away from the capital. Next up, we'll talk about the defeat traits themselves. Of course, there are some that if you are min-maxing, you will likely feel that you must get, such as Tamurkan's defeat trait or Isabella von Karstein's. One can be a game-changer depending on your faction by expanding your hero limit considerably. The other gives regeneration. The latter used to be easy to get in Warhammer 2, but now in 3, you will only ever see Isabella as a legendary lord in the endgame crisis, so it's far more difficult to acquire normally. As for Tamurkan, unless you're playing Kolek or Archeon, you have to go to a dangerous and isolated part of the map to get it in the early game. But I'm not going to go over every single trait or make a tier list of them. I'll mention a few and point out a few roles that generic lords usually fulfill and the traits that would help them fulfill that role better. For example, caster lords have a good amount of defeat traits that would be interesting to them. As of update 5.0, these are the starting points on the map for the lords with desirable traits for them. The best of them, arguably, is Yuan Bo, giving a 20% cost reduction for all spells in your army. He starts in the Amara Swamps in the north of Lustria. Not too far from him, just above in the bleak coast, we have Mother Ostankia with a trait that boosts your reserves, spell resistance and targeting range for your spells. There are a lot of lords that simply boost your reserves with another side benefit. Kairos Fateweaver in the southern Chaos Wastes near the bottom of the Southlands with Teclis nearby giving a similar effect. Back near Ostankia you have Katep giving you reserves and two types of attrition immunity. Near that by the Clawed Coast is Silostra with reserves and miscast reduction. South of the Empire by the Border Princes you have Scrag offering the same as Silostra. Then, above the Great Bastion you've got Village giving you melee defense and reserves. Lastly, Astrogoth Ironhand in Zorn Uskul, benefiting only lords that have access to Hashut, Death, Fire or Metal spells. Then you have some generic lords that are either ranged themselves or suited to buff ranged troops. Here's the starting points of the lords that have defeat traits tied to that. Marcus Wolfhart starts by the Creeping Jungle in Lustria giving missile strength for the whole army and some missile resistance for your lord. Up north in the Witchwood you have the Sisters of Twilight buffing missile strength of your lord only, as well as their casualty replenishment. In the Old World, just above Kislev and Krakadrak, you have Malakai Makaisen, boosting your artillery recruitment and missile strength for the whole army. In the south of the Empire, you've got Elspeth, giving a very niche buff that benefits only the units with explosive missile damage. And lastly, above the Great Bastion, over the Mountains of Morn, you have Zatan, giving extra range for your artillery units, alongside a hefty boost to magic item drop chance. Mailing Lords have a lot of defeat traits that benefit them, but here are some of them that help either them or their melee units out. Tyrion gives you a universal boost to recruit rank and bonus melee attack for your whole army. Volkmar the Grim further gives you melee attack and defense for your army. Both Balthazar Gelt and Zhao Ming, now conveniently located near each other in the southwest of Cathay, give you an armor bonus to your armies. Niao Ying, just north of those two, gives melee defense to your armies. And Thorek Ironbrow in the Southlands World's Edge Mountains gives a rare bonus to armor piercing weapon damage to all the units in your army. If you're looking to have a more self-focused lord, then instead I would recommend Wurzag in the Northern Badlands 
Azag in the Northern Grey Mountains, Throt the Unclean in the Hell Pit above Kislev, Eltharion in the Eastern Outer Ring in Ulthwan, Sigvald in the Shardlands and Archeon in the Blood Marshes. Lastly, if you're lucky enough to catch him still alive, Morgur in the Irana Mountains. Put together, they all boost your lord's defenses in some way to make them tankier in combat. Then of course there's general campaign utility. Traits that I would say are universal, like Tamurkan and Isabella's, but not such big game changers. Tic-Tac-Toe's trait gives you extra campaign movement range, for instance. The Fey Enchantress gives bonus casualty replenishment. Drazuath in the Howling Wastes gives you income bonus from province capitals, very useful to have on as many active lords as possible. Grease's Goldtooth gives more income from trade tariffs and from buildings in the local region. Morathi reduces hero action cost, which can reach zero if you have it on 10 lords. Bellacore gives you 4 small but decent bonuses, and Festus gives both casualty replenishment and vigor loss reduction. And those are just some of the traits that you can get with your lord. The overall idea is to get a character suited to your playstyle and help you out in your campaign. I understand if this method seems too optimized or min-maxing, but both the trait limit and the rising cost to hire a lord complicate having a more natural playstyle. That said, once you have the traits you desire, this entire method becomes irrelevant. In any future campaign, you can hire that generic lord and play with them as naturally as you would any other. Just don't save them afterwards, and you'll always have them at the base level you saved them once you finish trait hunting. And that is what I have for you today. I hope this method helps you out in making your ideal generic lord or lords. Lastly, a small heads up for you. I'm already working on the video based on the poll I posted a while ago. Expect it sometime soon. Until next time, 